You'd think the table salt is just salt, sodium chloride, wouldn't you? In fact, the vast majority of table salts also include the element iodine, usually in the form of potassium iodide. Now, this isn't always the case, like with some pickling salts or sea salts, but if you go check your cupboard, the chances are you'll have iodized table salt, for that's exactly what the word iodized means. So anyway, today's goal is to separate iodine from table salt. So let's get into it. But... So the reason iodine is in salt in the first place is because it's actually a necessary mineral for your body and you really don't want to not have iodine. Even though there is a very, very small amount of iodine in the salt, it can be separated pretty easily with household ingredients. So you got your water, hydrogen peroxide, white vinegar, iodized table salt, cornstarch, and some vitamin C packets. So here they are together, and here are the values for how much you're going to need of each one. Obviously, there's a lot more than is actually necessary, it's just showing what we're using. Some things don't have to be exactly what I used here, such as the cornstarch and the vinegar. It just requires some sort of vaguely dilute acid and a kind of starch, and these are just the most readily available. And you don't really need these vitamin C packets, you just need some sort of vitamin C, and we'll get to the reason why in a minute. So I started by filling a beaker with about 125 mils of water. And you can top it off like this if you want, but it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. And continue by adding the 30 mils of salt. So in this case, it should fill up to just above the 150 line. Next, you want to stir it until the salt is dissolved, which in my case is about 17 mils. Now, there can definitely still be salt at the bottom once you've finished, but don't worry too much about it, but the proportion of the salt relative to the water in this situation makes it very likely that it is a supersaturated solution. Meaning that there is so much salt already in the water that no more can actually dissolve into it and it sinks to the bottom, as you can probably see here. Next up is to add the 5 mils of vinegar. As you can see here, the pipette I'm using has measurements on the side, so I can control how much vinegar I put into solution with relative precision. Since it's a pretty small amount, there isn't really a noticeable difference in the depth of the liquid. Now stir it again, but just until you think it's mixed this time. And the process is the same for the hydrogen peroxide, but as usual, I forgot to film it. Now, before I move on to the next part, you should know that if your only goal was to separate the iodine from the sodium chloride, you're done right here. Once the vinegar and the hydrogen peroxide are added, the starch just serves as an indicator to show if what you did actually worked. So anyway, on to the next part, adding the starch. There isn't really a correct amount to add, I just kind of added a little bit and stirred it up. And I was honestly pretty surprised by how quickly the color change actually occurred. You can see it turns a nice purple color pretty much right away when the starch is mixed in. So, here you have it, your nice purple iodine. And the purple color of the liquid actually shows up surprisingly well on camera, which I was pretty happy about. Anyway, now on to explaining why what happened happened. So, there are these iodide ions in the solution, and we added in a hydrogen ion in the form of the acetic acid in the vinegar. And the hydrogen ion will take an electron from the iodine ion, and then the hydrogen peroxide is added to the solution to effectively give an oxygen atom to the hydrogen ions. And this results in the hydrogen ions and the hydrogen peroxide both just becoming water from the attached oxygen. Which of course during the reaction leaves the hydrogen peroxide and joins up with two of the hydrogen ions. And once this has happened, the iodine, like many atoms, will want to bond with itself, forming the I2 molecule. So that way, there won't be any extra electrons. So at this stage, we saw as we were making it, that although the iodine is separated from the sodium chloride, there's really no visual change. So if we actually want to see the iodine, that's where the starch comes in. 
And there is a much more complicated explanation for this, but just basically, the starch reacts with the iodine and changes the orbitals, causing it to reflect purple light. And so, yeah, that's why it turns that purple color. For how nice it is, you unfortunately can't just go pouring it down the drain this way. You have to add vitamin C before you can safely dispose of it. Yeah, just one more little explanation, then I promise it'll be over. So, the addition of vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, is the best way to reverse the reaction. Here's the equation, so you can see how the iodine is separated back into ions, and it's acidic again with the hydrogen ion. The only thing you really need is the ascorbic acid. I use the packets just for the vitamin C, and I only didn't worry about all the other stuff. Because it's going to be dumped out regardless, it doesn't really matter all that much. And even though this is honestly probably the most ghetto way to do this, it actually works. So I just add in the packet here and stir it up. The amount doesn't matter a whole lot, you just kind of keep adding it until it's fully not purple anymore. And as you can see as I start stirring it, the color change isn't as fast as when it originally turned purple, but it still fairly quickly loses its purple color again. And as you can see, it did foam up quite a bit, and I'm not exactly sure why this happened. The vitamin C itself shouldn't really have made this happen, and I'm not really sure why, so if you have any answers, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, since there's no real danger from adding too much, you can just add more vitamin C until you think that the reaction is fully reversed. As you can see, after adding the second one, it foamed up quite a lot more, so... I made it just in time, putting the paper towel underneath it, and I just kept mixing it as it overflowed. But if you use pure vitamin C, you shouldn't really have to deal with this. So as you can see, it's turned pretty yellow, it looks a little darker on camera, but still. And it's not really from the vitamin C, more just the orange juice in the packets. So again, if you're using pure ascorbic acid, this won't happen. So at this point, it's basically the same as it was before I added the hydrogen peroxide, so you can just go and pour it down the drain. And here, a couple minutes later, the bubbling has gone down a lot. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my content, want to see more of it, you could consider subscribing. You don't have to. Whatever. But anyway, bye.